Today, we're going to make pasta from scratch. Two types. You'll need three types of ingredients for this. Fresh eggs, double zero flour, and semolina flour. If you get those three things right, you're about 80% of the way there. Double zero flour is probably the most important ingredient in making pasta. So do not substitute this with a normal flour. And the reason why the double zero is so important is because it's super, super fine. When you pick it up with your hands, it's almost like water draining through your fingers. That's how fine it's supposed to be. I'm gonna fill this with double zero, about three quarters. Then we're gonna put the semolina flour. What the semolina flour does is it adds more texture to, to the pasta. So if you go full double zero, it's gonna feel very, very soft. It's gonna feel maybe overly silky and smooth. The semolina is the part that gives it the bite and the al dente. So you wanna make sure you put a little bit of that, not too much, you usually put about a third to every two thirds of the double zero. Then form a little bit of a hole with your fist. Leaking a little bit there, my hole wasn't large enough. So with the eggs, I usually like to put a little bit more yolk to, to whole eggs. Otherwise it's gonna end up that sickly white color and it just lacks that, that kind of egg noodle type flavor. Bit of salt. And then you start mixing with your hand. Just mix it all around. Now you see that it's all over my hands right now. And one way to tell when you've got the right texture and that you're nearly there is that you should be able to remove most of the flour off your hand through the dough by the end of it. Now you notice it's probably a little bit dry. Just add just a bit of water. Not too much, otherwise it'll become gooey. You can see how the water has now done its job. It's starting to bind this ball together. And that's gonna make enough to feed about four people's worth of pasta. Maybe six if they're not big eaters. I haven't kneaded it yet. I'm just trying to Make sure it feels right first. And then I can begin the kneading. Let's take it gentle but firm. Now, the dough is not that big. So it's enough for me to use one hand. But you can see that every time I press down, I'm rotating. And you start to feel that it's getting a little too sticky and it sticks to your hand a little bit upon each push then add a little bit more flour it's definitely yielding a little bit more freely and the reason why you're kneading is to obviously mix everything together. Plus, you're also releasing the elasticity in the dough when you're mixing it. Bite here? I don't know the right way to describe it. I've left this for 20 minutes and you can see that it's changed texture should feel heavier in your hands than what it felt like before. It smells like flour, smells like eggs, which is exactly what it should smell like. What do you want to do after uncovering your golden ball that's been rested? Is to just give it a little bit more of a knead and massage just to loosen things up 
a little, I'd say, give it like 30 seconds to a minute. One way to know that you've got the texture right is to push on the ball. And it should have a little bit of give, but able to bounce back nearly straight away to its original position. So that's when you know you've got the right texture, the right density to make pasta. And that's when you know you're ready to roll out some pasta. Now, we're ready to make some pasta. You don't need this whole bowl. So I recommend just grab a handful, pull it apart, about this much, right? Just in the palm of your hand. That's enough for your first one. The rest I would wrap it up just to make sure it doesn't go dry. Not much is needed. All you gotta do is with the palm of your hand, just spread it a little thinner. You don't have to Use a rolling pin. Uh, this is just like an easy way to do it. Let the, let the pasta machine do all the work for you. So with the palm of your hand, just spread it out in an unfussy way until it's like a giant cookie, relatively flat. And put it to setting number one. That's three now. Let's go number five. The reason why you want to put the flour after each time so the pasta doesn't stick to the machine. Let's go setting six. Probably not the easiest thing to do this by yourself, but once you get the hang of it, put it on number seven now. Roll it. So the flower each time so it doesn't stick together. Cut it to the width that you want. And each one should be able to uncover it. There you go. Look at that. And just to make sure it doesn't stick together, I'm gonna give it a bit of a juice. This is probably more of a cross between a fettuccine and a pappardelle now, now that I'm looking at it. And then we do this again. Let's we'll start from number one. Number three, let's go five. Let's go number eight. This is the thinnest that I wanna make for a ravioli. I don't usually go to number nine. Number nine, I find, becomes so thin that it does lose its al dente texture. There you go. Some people might say that you know when it's thin enough for ravioli when you can blow. Probably see through maybe my face. So I'm just gonna use a simple ricotta filling for this. You can use whatever else you want, be creative with the filling. So I'm gonna fold this towards me. So what you wanna do is fill it in the middle of the bottom half. Fold it towards you. What I'm going to do is just start finding where the middle spots are. Use your fingers to press the middle. I'm going to do this to seal away that ricotta. And I want each of my little Ravioli still have its own personal shape and size. This is the fun part. You can make this as big or as little as you like. Totally up to you. I love to have a little bit more pasta, but I'd say half-half is, is a nice ratio. 
We've made pasta, congratulations. Two types, pappardelle, ravioli. Took about 45 minutes to do it. Really not a great idea to wear black 